Okay, good morning one and all. Roger once again. Today we're going to get as deep as you can possibly get. And uh, we're going to be looking at Petra. And what it was constructed from. And then what is the meaning of that. And then we're going to talk about some serious meaning. Alright, let's get started. Okay, my wonderful friends, I am going to go out on a limb and say that basically most of you are going to know what Petra is. Now, you, you know what it looks like, and you know it's some kind of religious monument, and it has a, a, an entrance into here, into what I believe they call a treasury. Now, I, I'm not certain of that, but I am certain of what this was before it was carved and how they carved it and what it was carved from. Now this is where the shocker du jour comes in. That my friends is an artery and originally I believe it was packed with blood and this is carved from blood. These right here are what's called muscle sarcomeres. Now I'm going to show you this in extreme detail and it's literally undeniable. This was carved from muscle and this was the feeding artery that fed all of these muscle fibers. Now remember these blocks. Remember this shape in here. You see this? Let me home in a little better on that so you can see. All right, let's just look at that. What are we seeing here? We're seeing blocks. Another block up here. We're seeing this here, this here. Now, you see this pattern here? This and then right next to it, this nice flat stuff. And the same thing up here. This is kind of chucked up. Somebody carved it up and blocked it up. But this is a nice, clean muscle sarcomere. All right, that's what a muscle sarcomere looks like. When they pull in, that's how a muscle contracts. And they are made in these blocks. And can I prove that? I believe I can. All right, this is what you just saw at Petra. And these are muscle sarcomeres. This is relaxed, this is contracted. And they erode sometimes on these lines. They're less stable then um, then the, the, there's one side that I showed you was nice and basically smooth and then there was one side it was all black and scratchy like that let's just look at it again remember this configuration and that's what muscle is all right there they are right there now you remember I showed you the scruffy looking side and then a nice flat clean side that's what muscle is, and if they pull together, that's when they contract, and they are in these blocks. Now, I'm going to show you another piece of geology, a rock, that has these fibers in it, but they are absolutely flawless. And here it is right here. Now, that muscle sort of twisted and so forth, but these are the muscle fibers. And then this is blood. This is the blood that services muscle. When you have muscle and you're working on muscle, you need a hell of a lot of blood. And that's what this is. This is blood. So that is muscle cut like this and we can see those sarcomeres. So that, that's pretty obvious what we're looking at here. Okay, prepare thyself, Petra. This right here, this right here, and this right here are all arteries. And that was the feeder artery that fed all these. And all this is muscle. You see the blocks of muscle? Remember I showed you the ones right here? These are all blocks of muscle. All right, and this is the where the blood would have ran. Because you have to have all blood servicing all of this stuff. Now, so here's Petra, 
and then they carve some stuff up above it here. I'll show you that in a second. I believe that what I'm going to be showing you is here and then right up above. Now, connective tissue has white, tough connective tissue, and then it has bloody stuff. Up here, it appears that it, it, there was it started into the muscle area. All right, so from here up, I think it's starting into muscle. And connective tissue is starting to shoot out like this into the muscle. I mean into the uh, tendons. Because what I'm going to show you now is tendinous material above. You see this? Here's your muscle. Totally clean sarcomeres. Really good looking stuff for muscle. But it has to connect somewhere. And it has to connect to some kind of a tendon. And, and this is the tendinous stuff. And that was what I showed you, I believe, up above Petra. Now, I'm not, I can't swear to that, but I believe that's true. And you can see that that is connective tissue. Now, not only that, inside the treasury, you can also see some connective tissue. Because you're going to have that everywhere. Even where you have muscle, you're still going to have connective tissue. And that is inside here. All right, these, this is all, you know, membrane-ish, connective tissue, whatever you want to call it. And there's blood pores coming through there. I believe this is tendinous material. It's so hard to say to be certain. You'd have to really do some studies here. But I, as far as I'm concerned, this is no question whatsoever. This was carved from muscle. And here's what muscle looks like in electron microscope. There it is. There's petrol, and the petrol is crunched it together better. And then you'll find somewhere in there there's going to be a major artery. And it could be coming right out of this area here. Hold on. Let's look into that. That could be petrol right there. <laughs> yep, I think that's petrol. <laughs> And these are those valleys that are running through Petra. I, I mean, I'm sorry, that's just what it is. It's like I said the other day, it's not my fault. It's just here. I, I, and if you don't pay any attention to it, then that's your fault. All right, so this is connective tissue. The white stuff is tough. That's the tough stuff. This just erodes away very simple because it's basically fleshy, bloody flesh. This is the tough stuff. This is the connective tissue, the white. All right. This, there were some anchors up here going to where I'm not certain, but you could absolutely see that we were starting with muscle sarcomeres. Okay, my friends. This says right here, millions of years in one picture, because they think this is laid down, then this one, then this one, then this one. That is biology right there. Just like I showed you a petrol. Now, at one time, I would have considered that academia just was, had understood what they thought was right, and if I presented the evidence that it wasn't right, it would be examined. But I have been, been 15 years realizing that is not the case. And a lot of what I'm showing you here right now refers to documents that were written in those very caves in Petra, and in the Nag Hammadi texts, and in the, the um, Dead Sea Scrolls, and all of these places, they wrote about these events that are happening right now, where is a denial of truth, and, uh, and it goes a lot deeper than that. So, I think I've shown enough today to, that you understand, we don't understand. <laughs> we do not understand. And the only way to understand is to, to examine this evidence and not to just to dismiss it because it's too scary. And I'm telling you, it's scary. There's no question about that. No question whatsoever. When this, in a microscope, an electron microscope, is the same as these right here. A person can stand there, basically. They're about the size of a person's height. One sarcomere. Now, and you can see this is the level of the blood where it's sort of pooled at the bottom 
and, and sort of separated some of the heavier stuff probably from the lighter. And that's what happens. Blood has a, a different specific gravities of the different parts of the blood. And there it is loaded with metals. Right? I've done a lot of research on this biology because I, when I found out that the rocks were biological, like even this hair follicle. I've shown this hundreds of times. This is about a thousand times bigger than a human. And that would mean, you know, about a mile tall guy. And then I have little ones that are just the same as us. And they've been CAT scan, DNA tested, 100% human. So um, I thought academia was interested in the truth. I find out it's not, that's just not the case. And that it was exactly what it stated in these ancient texts, which is what we're going to be going into the next video. I'm going to go very, very deep with this, and it's going to be meaningful. Now, if it's not having any meaning to you, that's fine. If it does, I would think that's finer. So I'm going to wrap it up today for this. Like I say, this is just to get you started with the fact that we are not understanding let's put it that way of our ancient past and and i see no no interest in understanding it i see interest in in dominating students and that's what it talks about exactly in the ancient text it talks about false teachers and their destruction does not sleep and if they won't speak about these kind of things, which cannot be denied, are in plain sight, my DNA tests, my CAT scans, my specimens, all available to be, to be you know, reviewed. And they refuse to do that because they know what the outcome is going to be. They're going to be basically dethroned. All right, I love you all. All right, just to alert you, what we're going to be going in the next text, understanding what we now know, we have to start over. These are the Gnostic texts, and this was supposedly written by um, Doubting Thomas, who was Didymus Judas Thomas, who was the scribe of Jesus. And he wrote down, these are the secret sayings that the living Jesus spoke while he was walking around uttering these words of wisdom. And Doubting Thomas wrote them down and there's 114 sayings, and they are, they're, they're hard to understand, let's put it that way. But what he did say was, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. We all consider death, that you just die, you stop breathing, that's it, you're dead. Well, obviously that's not the case. If you cannot experience death, nobody I, I've ever seen is just, you know, has anybody ever interpreted the sayings and just kept on walking around and never died? No, I don't think so. But there's a whole different thing between being dead and being dead and death. Two different things. It appears. It has to be. There's no other way. Anyway, we got a lot of thinking to do. All right, so we're going to start by trying to interpret these sayings. And it says, let him who seeks continue until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished. And he will rule over the all. Not sure what that at last part, rule over the all. But I would suppose you're going to be more understand. You understand more than the rest. So you, you literally do mentally rule over. But you have to open up your mind. And that is not happening in academia. They can't do it. And it's because of things like this. It's very, very upsetting to them. So we have to step outside of that arena. All right? I love you all. We'll talk soon. I just want to throw this in. This is from Pink Floyd. I'm not going to play the music, but they did this in 1972. It's called Mud Men. Somehow they knew. This is very, very cool. And um, this was re, you know, put out again. I, I never even knew anything about this. I never heard anything about Mud Men in a movie, or I, I don't know if it was a movie or not, but it certainly um, could have been. <laughs> now, like I say, this goes way back to 1972. 
and this was reissued in uh, 2016 by somebody. I don't know who put put this up on YouTube, but um, this is pretty accurate, to be perfectly honest with you. Watch where you see what happens here. Now, how they knew to do this, I have no idea. Look at this. These are all up in the body of this creature. And there's people living up there, just like just like on Earth. These are the mountains. Just exactly what I'm showing you. Petra and everything. Very, 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 very similar. All right. This is all body tissue. And I, I have the same things. So you can see it very, very simple. There it is. We're heading over to Petra right now. And guess who's coming out of Petra? Look at this. How, how they knew this, I do not know. But they realized what was going on. Now, were the creatures looking like this? And they might have been. I have some very, very strange looking creatures. And uh, it's just amazing. You should listen to the music of it. Mud Men is very interesting. It's really good. But I, they'll probably kick me off if I was to play the music as well. But you should come up and look at this and listen to it. It's, uh, they were way ahead of their time. Way ahead of their time. All right, I love you all. We, we just got to think about what things were like way back then. These are mountains moving. And all this was talked about. And this is fully understood in the ancient, ancient, ancient past. Now, they're showing it on dry land. I'm showing that this all happened in the Great Flood. But the creatures were like, that was just, that those are tiny creatures compared to the creatures that... I have shown Typhon and all the rest of them, but it's it's uh, pretty good. Back in 1972, that's 50 years ago. So they were way ahead of their time, and somehow they knew about this. I'd love to speak to, uh, I think it was Roger Waters, one of them, that's the last guy. I, I don't know how many left of them to Pink Floyd, but I remember their songs very well. And look, they're showing all the patterns of the skin and everything. Somehow they knew what was going on. 